suggestive uh, impressionistic version of, of a bait fish that shine or general bait fish in the olive colors and the hook that I'm going to use is the Daiichi 2722 nickel stinger bass hook in a size 2 but this fly can also be tied up to a size 3 aught. The beads are silver line gold and there's two mediums and a large to the front followed with a large and four mediums at the back. The hair fibers are super hair product by Spirit Rivers and I'm going to use translucent thread to uh, secure the materials on the hook and some olive thread to tie off the tail and the eyes are 3D molded eyes yellow glued on with the marine goop. The uh, cousin to this fly, another pattern I use, is the sultry shad. Both these patterns have been effective for inland, inland bass such as smallmouth and largemouth bass and the bigger sultry shiner has also worked for striped bass and you can use a saltwater hook as a side note for, for saltwater, saltwater bait fish such as smelt or herring sort of pattern. Okay, let's break this down and show the tying steps. I'm going to start off by threading the beads on. I'm going to flatten the barb just a little bit. I'm going to add the beads couple of medium sized beads first. Followed by a large, two larges actually. Okay, and we're going to use about four more of the medium sized beads. A couple more. The last one. Okay, now we're ready to place the hook back into the vise. We make a little bit of an adjustment on this to secure the hook better. Okay, now we're going to separate the uh, a distance between the two large beads. We're going to tie in the fine translucent thread. In between the two large beads. Now I'm going to show you the bead locking technique. Okay, I want to uh, have an appreciable distance between those two large beads because that's where I'm going to tie in my super hair and I want to make sure I leave ample room for that. So that's about the distance I want to use, probably about two bead widths. Okay, I'm going to trap the uh, little the beads in the back with my forefinger of my right hand and bring the thread to the back of the hook behind the last bead and around and secure it in place to start my bead lock. I'm going to advance the thread forward and use my thumb to trap the, the thread uh, underneath the bead and go around a couple times. Next one and continue on until I'm at the head of the large bead. Okay. And those back beads are fairly secure. Well, they are secure. They locked in. And now I'm going to apply the super hair. And there's two layers for the top. I'm going to start off with the olive. This will be the topping. Now you'll have, you might have to play around with this to 
initially to get the feel for the amount of hair to use, but after a couple of patterns, I think you'll you'll get it down fairly quickly. Again, I can uh, I can double this over, which I probably will to save using a lot of the uh, material. I'm going to double that over one more time. Trim that off. Okay, that looks pretty good. Lay that atop of the hook. Capture the, the thread between my thumb and forefinger. Loose wrap and then come down taut. Okay, I've got these uh, fibers off the side. I'm just going to roll them back up here. I want to keep them in a fairly tight group. You don't want them to spread over to the side of the hook. Keep those on top. So you can see the hair is right evenly over the top of the hook and that's what we want. You don't want them spreading off to the side. Okay, we're going to trim off the excess at the front. Tie down the front of the butts. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just trim off back here, get things evened up. Now I'm going to add a little stretch of uh, green super hair. Since the dark of these, these shiners tend to be have a dark shade. Okay, I'm going to double this over so I can get more hair out of it. I'm just going to lay this right over the top of the, the olive. Okay, cinch down. Again, get those fibers up to the top and group them tightly together. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, yeah. Looks pretty good. Pick this these fibers up and trim them off. Okay, now squeeze on, squeeze the uh, super hair tight and get the monofilament, the translucent thread, rather tightly secured around, around that. Okay, now we've got the topping completed. I'm just going to even it up back here. And we're going to rotate the fly upside down and tie on the, the belly portion, which is going to be this bright green super hair. Let me see here. I'm trying to be careful to judge the right amount of hair so I don't want this fly to get real bulky, not too fat. I uh, might have used a little too much, but I think we can make that work. I'm going to double it over. Trim off this extra. Now this other extra that I have in my left hand, I'm just going to keep that bundled up and then use some masking tape later on to, to keep that for my next fly. But this is a little bit too much, so I'm going to thin this out just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Lay that on the bottom, top of the hook, which is the belly side. Now, this thing that when you tighten that down and pull taut, it's going to want to turn on you, so you don't want it to turn. So hold on to it and pull down. Okay, trim off the excess. Let's take a look at that. Nice thing again, the, the rotary vise, it sure is ideal tie, tying vise to use so that you can get a good look at both sides and make sure that your fly is 
in the right direction of being a symmetrical fly. Okay, cinch those fibers down. That looks pretty good. Okay. Can build up the thread a little bit. We're going to do these half hitches to secure this tying thread. Okay. Cut that off. Now we're going to temporarily remove this fly out of the vise so we can gather these super hair together and uh, form the body. Now what we're going to do, the trick to shaping this fly is first of all get the bottom of the belly the fibers evenly uh, ha you know right in the middle through the hook okay and then now as you notice I pinch down these fibers and I'm going to compress the fibers and as you can see here I'm already starting to take on the shape of the fly okay or the shape of the bait fish rather Okay, the belly and the top, a little bit of a slope there. So now the trick is to secure the back of this super hair to make the tail. Okay, so I'm going to judge the distance, uh, probably a little about one and a half times the, the, the hook shank length. I'm going to trap the thread with my fingers and just come. Whoops, let's try that again. You may have to, this takes a little bit of a doing, but eventually you get it down. Okay, make several wraps. Now, I'm going to twirl the bobbin, and this will snug up the wraps and get tight wraps on there. Let's try that again. So twirl the bobbin, get it going. Okay. That was pretty good. Now turn the fly around. Give yourself plenty of thread. We're going to do those half hitches again. Even more thread. It doesn't have to be a lot because I'm going to super glue this anyway. Okay, now we're ready to trim that off. Okay, and as you can see, we have a, a basic fish shape already started. I got a few wild hairs here I got to trim off. And my tying thread. That you can see the silhouette of, of the fish, the bait fish, already made by pulling those super hair that, uh, fibers together. Okay, now we can uh, go ahead and cut off. Okay, I got a little bit of a thread here. I got to get rid of there. Get that tag end off. Okay, uh, and come back here a little ways, maybe a little over a quarter of an inch, and cut off the tail. And if you want to get fancy and make a fork tail, you can cut off a little bit of the, the center fibers. You can kind of notch it out. Actually, I'm going to go to my other scissors. They work a little bit better for this job. A little bit heavier duty. The fin, or the tail rather, is uh, kind of thin. Uh-oh, I can see that uh, I might have cut the, uh, the thread off a little bit, but that's okay, because I'm going to glue that with super glue before it unravels. So I'm using the uh, quick gel super glue, and every once in a while you have to reopen the, uh, the tube with a little bit of, with a small needle to 
so that it'll come out. There we go. And as they say, a little dab will do you, and that's the case with uh, this super glue. I'm going to apply it to these thread wraps now. All the way around. Nice even amount of glue. And after this sets up, then I'll go off and, and cut cut off those uh, those thread thread butts on there. And that'll take care of that. Now we're ready to put the eyes on. I'm going to use the marine goop to glue on the eyes. A little bit of marine goop there. Take it out with the bodkin. Just kind of scoop it out like so. Just kind of put it on and get it started. And just go ahead and rotate the vise on around. Now, if you don't have a rotary vise, you're just going to have to sort of roll your bodkin around the head. Okay. Secure with a cap back on the glue so it won't dry out. I'm ready to glue the eyes on. Using the th again the 3D uh, molded eyes in yellow. Just get it going on there on one side. And just gently press on the eye, embedding it into the glue. We'll get our second eye going here. Take it. On the other side, embed that into the glue. Okay, that's that's pretty good uh, on the side of the, the pattern. See, but I like to look at the top to make sure that they're lined up fairly well. And those look pretty good. I can push that in a little more. And I'm going to push down on this a little bit just to kind of form the head a little bit different. Make sure it's nice and tapered with the rest of the body. Okay, and that completes the sultry shiner for the most part. Obviously, you need to let this glue set. And if you get a couple of hairs that are out of place, you can trim them off or leave them in there. And I'm going to I would uh, also trim off this the uh, thread uh, for a time off the tail. And you can snip off a little more in the tail and make it cosmetically appealing to you, and which is probably way more than what you'll need for the fish. But you know, we always like our flies to look really sharp, so we should be proud of what we tie. We don't want any junk flies in our boxes, that's for sure. And that concludes the sultry shiner. <laughs>